Hey everybody, I'd like to personally welcome you to another episode of Adapt or Die, where the backcountry and tactical meet. Today, I've got the special privilege of introducing a friend of mine. His name's Ben. He's the owner and founder of TRC Outdoors. It's a company based in the United Kingdom that makes all sorts of bits and bops of kit from the Sierzo suit, um, the top and bottom, as well as the Timmy hat. These items, as well as a few others, were sent to me for me to test, to review as an American, to get a different perspective on his kit than most of the market that is, you know, obviously in the United Kingdom and that whole different part of the world. So Ben is going to talk to us about one of the hot topics that's especially in the United States right now, belt kit. Belt kit is a bit of kit that is all around your belt line, big surprise there, all the sustainment, light infantry, kind of a whole different perspective than what we have in the United States. Most in the United States, we have got a plate carrier with all the stuff on the front, maybe have, a, have an assault pack. It's a whole different kind of setup that has really become very popular in the United States. And rather than me talk more about it, because I have talked about it a little bit in my narrow experience with it, I'd like to have Ben on here to really give us some perspective and an education on it because he is an SME with belt kit. The British have been running this type of equipment for, well, since the dawn of time. So he's got some really good experience, prior infantry officer in the British Army. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Ben from TRC Outdoors. How's it going? This is Ben from TRC Outdoors. Um, been seeing a lot on uh, the old social media, uh, especially from the American side, that there seems to be a bit of a, a bit of a thing about belt order and belt kit now, and lots of people putting together these Minuteman belt kits. I was talking to Steve about this the other day, so um, obviously he was trying to chat to me because we in the UK have done belt kit for a very, very long time. So what I said I would do is uh, just drag mine, uh, my old belt kit out and uh, just do a bit of a rig rundown. Just talk about uh, the setup, what it was for and the kind of uh, basic contents for it. So my setup is uh, at its very basis uh, an issued system. It's just been heavily modified along the way. So the belt that goes around inside it is issue. The utility pouches are issue, albeit modified. Uh, same with the ammo pouches. The yoke is not an issued yoke. This was an American fighting load carrier thing. I don't know what it's properly called, but it's had the pouches stripped off of it. Um, I quite liked this back in the day because I liked the padding at the top. I liked the amount of uh, air it allowed to my body, but also with the mesh, it's allowed me to mount other stuff that um, I can put on here along the way if I want to, or just leave it vanilla. Um, so. This is, just to be clear, this is a commander setup. So I was an infantry officer. Uh, I was expected to be uh, conducting the violence and directing the violence rather than, you know, completely involved in it. Uh, my spot was one tactical bound behind the lead section or squad as I think you call them. So my rig is lacking some of the stuff you'd expect to see from the boys. So a strictly vanilla uh, setup would actually have ammo pouches on both sides. Uh, and our doctrine at the time was mags on your left uh, because the British rifle could only be fired from the right shoulder. And then on your right, which tended to be your dominant hand where you're gonna throw stuff, uh, that's where we would put uh, pyro uh, and bombs. So uh, smoke and uh, hand grenades, basically. So if you have a look on the inside of the rig here, <laughs> you can see that, uh, I've got a couple of things going on. So just through the bottom of the pouches here is just this uh, this webbing strap. Right, that's an issue bit of kit, it's called an expansion strap. It's just for attaching things to your, your Bergen. Uh, the job it's doing here is just to tie all those pouches together in a nice solid loop. Um, I think the best analogy you can think of for this is, uh, imagine uh, a woman going out for a run in an ordinary bra compared to a woman going out for a run in a sports bra, yeah? It holds everything together and makes sure it all moves in one unit. 
Right, going around the inside of that is then what's called a hippo pad. So this is just uh, a comfort item, um, and it's it's got a couple of, it's a comfort item, stops the old pooches from rubbing, makes it fit to your body a bit better. Uh, but the other thing it does is it increases your waist size, so it just gives you that little bit more uh, real estate. Now, I was always a racing snake, so I was only sort of three pouches across the back. You get someone that's had a few more pies and drunk a bit more Guinness, and they're going to be having like four pouches around the back. Uh, so for my setup, we've got got three around the back. So that's just all that how that is. All right. So I've also modded it out uh, with a Cobra buckle because they were in and sexy just as I was retiring. Uh, so that's had a Cobra buckle put on there. Before that, it would have like a roll pin belt on there. Uh, mostly they were from cargo straps that the blokes had liberated. Uh, and then stuck that round through there. It's just quick tighten, quick release, basically. Right, working away round. <clears throat> ammo pouches, yeah. Closed ammo pouches were de rigueur back in the day. Uh, that's because a lot of our training is influenced by the jungle, yeah. Um, we put our junior leaders out into the Ulu, uh, infantry-wise, uh, as much as we can, especially the recce boys. Um, just because it is just such a harsh environment, it makes sure you're, you know, really tough and, are, and on it. We also have got a permanent training base in Kenya uh, and the, uh, all the dust and crap there that can get inside your mags is, you know, pretty shitty. Uh, so, especially as well with our British training areas, especially the Infantry Battle School in Brecon in Wales, which is evil, uh, the terrain there is very, very unforgiving. So. Closed ammo pouches are a thing. Yeah, all right, it's a six mag carry. Yeah, three in each pouch, 330 rounders. Okay, normally you find a little loop in the centre there, the boys would tuck in a speed loader. Uh, also, mounted on the front of the pouch, yeah, I've got a little pooch just for a uh, multi-tool. Let's keep that handy. Uh, you sometimes see um, frag grenade pouches mounted on the front. On the front end there as well. I've also got just a little utility knife tucked in there. Um, that's because this rig is set up to take uh, set up for me when I was using a rifle with a grenade launcher, uh, and that precluded me from mounting a bayonet. Um, yeah, the bayonet is very much a thing. So um, you find that with the bayonet, there's a couple of ways. Well, three, two or three ways it gets worn. It's either mounted at this position here. Yeah, so it can be accessed with the left hand to go on the front of the rifle, or it's mounted uh, horizontally with the hilt pointed forward on the right, or horizontally on the back with the hilt out to your left. It's just ways blokes tended to do it. Um, also, just to point out here, yeah, I've got pouches on this to take four bombs. Yeah, four 203 bombs. Okay, so ammo. Let's work our way round to the first utility pouch. Right, these have been modified from the issue ones. The issue ones, they have a, like a, a Spanish clip closure. It works. Um, it always works. I've seen them sort of a bit broken and what have you, little loops snapped and that. They still work. They're a bit fiddly with gloved hands and the rest of it, but I've had them modded out with these um, surface mount buckles, which, you know, I just much preferred. So pouch number one, yeah. Water bottle, yeah, big old black bomb, litre of water. What I've also got in here, stainless steel mug. This is one of the issue ones. This is what everything would be cooked in, scoff, brew, shaving it, all the rest of it, yeah. Dig a trench, beat a man to death, absolutely gleaming bit of kit. Stainless steel, not crappy aluminium. And also, there's my cooker, right? So this is one that's made by Polymath Products, um, gleaming, and this is to take solid fuel tablets. Right, middle pouch. Yep, so this is kind of survival come escape. So this is if I'm, you know, forced to just live off my belt kit. Uh, the theory works out that you've got 24 hours in your belt kit, another 24 hours in your day sack. Your day sack is very much part of your fighting order. And you're really only relying on the kit that's in here if you're in a position where everything's gone to a bag of bollocks and you're trying to return to friendly lines. So the thought is that you are not going to be, for an extended period, uh, operating out of this gear. You're going to be making your way back to friendly lines. All right, so Bakshi lighter. This is just uh, an X-Attack fire sleeve with a standard big lighter in it. Yeah, Bakshi lighter in here. Got my strobe. Yeah, a bit of pyro. Got some um, pen flares. 
Uh, I will say up front that all pyrotechnics are either airsoft or are inert or replica. Okay, then I've got a couple of scoff meals. Right, these are civvy ones, but they're basically made by the same people that make the uh, scoff meals for the army. They're boiled in the bag, wet packs, right? Um, you can eat these cold if you need to. Tastes like congealed vomit, but these are pretty good scran. Um, plenty, of, plenty of calories in them to keep you going. So a couple of scoff meals in there. I've also got this uh, block of emergency rations, which are just really uh, high calorie bars, uh, just to give you an extra perk if you really, really need it, all right? Also tucked in the top of here is a, a little slip um, and there it's in all of these pouches. And what that's supposed to do is to take uh, your uh, water purification tablets that come out your ration packs. All right, I'd also have um, a pack of solid fuel tablets in here. Um, I think the new ones are alcohol based, but we used to have the old, uh, uh, the old hexamine ones that smelt like cat's piss and probably gave you cancer. Then next pouch along, I've got, Another water bottle, so another litre of water. And I've got a uh, my emergency blanket, you know, my last foil blanket thing, just, you know, just in case. And then moving on round, I've got my loop line, right? So this is a thing that's come out of the jungle. So this is a uh, it's either six or eight metre, I forget which, uh, webbing sling uh, with, loop, with a loop at either end. It's got a carabiner. And uh, the idea behind these, they are for crossing swift water. So you might put a load of them together, send someone across, you know, with, uh, across with uh, just swim across, take the line across, and then this is a hand line for the rest of the blokes to swim across. Um, you can use it to lower your kit down a, down a slope or off a height or something like that. Confidence line, give a bloke a hand up if he needs it. Um, and you can also, uh, rig them into an abseiling harness and all sorts of bits like that. It's just a really, really useful bit of kit. Like I said, it started off as a jungle thing, but you know, once you've started carrying them, you, you don't get rid of it. It's a gleaming bit of kit. Right. And then just here, I've got my um, command pouch essentially. So this is all my other bits and pieces that I need. So let's go through it. Yep, cam cream. Yeah, can't face the enemy without cam cream on. I have got heliograph signaling mirror because you never know, signal to fast air or helo or what have you. All right. Headlamp, yeah, this is the silver one that um, we sell at TRC Outdoors. Absolutely gleaming bit of kit, this. Really, you should check these out, brilliant headlamps. And then I've got, all right, a couple of light sticks for all the things you need light sticks for, buzz, store, buzz saws, entry marking, uh, setting up a line of departure for casualty marking, loads of bits and pieces like that. Yeah. Spare compass. Um, yeah, full size compass. I'm not going to muck about with a button compass or something like that. Um, if you are going to want to use something to navigate with effectively, use, use a uh, full size compass. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of weight and uh, a lot of space, and it's just makes life easy for you if you need it, doesn't it? Okay, then I've got <coughs> Sharpie and a diamond file. That's for uh, knife and or bayonet. Um, so uh, the reason for the Sharpie is the way I have learned to do it along the way is you put Sharpie along your, your edge that you want to touch up. And then uh, once you fold it down and all the Sharpie's gone, then you know you've touched up the whole edge. It's just as simple as that. Rifle cleaning kit, oil, yeah. So strip down rifle cleaning kit, all the bits I need just to make sure I can give the weapon a pull through, uh, rods for poking out crap that's got down the barrel or anything like that. That's what that's for. Um, with the grenade launcher, I'm not carrying anything for that. Um, that'll be in my second line gear, you know. That'll be sat in the uh, day sack or in my Bergen, depending on how long I'm out and how much I'm expecting to use it. All right, slate cards. All right, these are just uh, plastic cards that you can write on with a uh, pencil or what have you. Useful for doing sketches, uh, writing your orders, uh, making notes, little bits and pieces like that. Just very, very useful. Bit of kit. All right, TAMS. Yeah, Tactical Aid Memoir. This is my Bible as a commander. This has got all the formats for my reports and returns in it. 
It's got my orders process in it, planning, weapons ranges, all the good bits of kit that I need to do my job professionally. All of that tucked in here. And finally in here, I've got a set of pocket comms. This is invaluable if you're overseas. Uh, sadly, the company's no more, but uh, what it is, is just a series of flashcards. So you can pick out bits and pieces you need. And this is the military set. So tucked in at the far end of that, I've got all the grenades and bombs and bits and pieces like that. All right, and then a little bit of notes there, yeah. Cracking bit of kit, these pocket comms. Great for just if you need to make yourself understood with, I don't know, foreign troops or, you know, host nation support or anything like that. And then last but last, not least, just mounted on the end of the pouch here, is a smoke grenade pouch. So here it is. Got a little airsoft one in there just to, to show it. But um, yeah, that would be smoke grenade for signalling or, you know, bags of smoke up the middle. Glory lives forever. So there we go. That's a quick run through a set of British belt kit. I hope that that has been of interest.